Hey there, Justin with Pool Elementary, and today we have a beautiful pool and beautiful scenery. We just have one problem, and that's cloudy water. So stay tuned, and I'm gonna show you a couple different methods to clear this cloudy water up fast. First things first, we're gonna go over the top four reasons uh, that could be creating your pool's cloudiness. The first thing I like to check before I check any of my uh, chlorine levels, balancing or anything like that, is I wanna make sure that the pool's circulating enough and then our filtration system's working properly. So that's kind of it. If you have a timer on your actual pump, make sure it's not turning off prematurely. We want these pumps to actually run at least eight hours a day to actually turn over the total volume of your pool water. Uh, the next thing, uh, if the pump's running properly, is we want to check the filtration system. Um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and backwash this sand filter. Or if you have a cartridge filter, you might want to pull it out and give it a good spray off and clean just to rule out that that's not the reason that this pool's cloudy. With these sand filters, um, if you haven't changed out your sand in your sand filter uh, for over five years, it's probably due for a sand change. Um, that could be another reason why your pool's cloudy is because your sand's getting hard inside and it's just basically time for a uh, sand filter change. So with our backwash line out, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, backwash this filter just to make sure it's clean and we're, everything's running properly. And you can see how dirty that water is. So it's definitely due for a cleaning. Turn it off. We'll give it a quick 20 second rinse and this is gonna flush any more cloudy water that's still in the filter out the backwash line and just clear out the lines. So we'll give it 20 seconds. All right, now that we've rinsed it, we know we're not gonna get a big poof of cloudy water back in the pool. So we'll go ahead and put it back on filter position. And now that we've cleaned our sand filter or you've taken your cartridge filter out and gave it a good cleaning, the next step with the circulation and filtration is we wanna make sure our pump basket's clean. We don't want a bunch of debris in there because that just kills our chlorine levels and it'll actually slow down the filtration process. So we'll go ahead and clean this out. Also, with our pump off, it's good to come out and check our actual skimmer baskets. And as you can see, it's really full of tree debris and looks like uh, some resonance of a bubble cover. Oh, and as you can see, uh, as we're cleaning out this uh, skimmer basket, we have a little salamander or neuter. I'm not really sure what it is. Uh, if you know, leave a comment in the comment box to tell us what it is, but he's a little guy that's hanging out. So we're gonna set him over here and let him do his thing. All right, with our pump baskets cleaned, our skimmer baskets cleaned, and we've just cleaned our filter, we know that everything that's possibly in line with this pump and the circulation system is clean. So nothing should be slowing down the actual water flow and our filter should be doing a magnificent job of cleaning out this cloudy pool. So with all that ruled out, we'll go ahead and fire up this pump again. Now that we know that our pool's filtration system is working properly, the next thing to check is the actual pool's chlorine. So you can do that uh, a number of different ways. Um, you can use a dropper kit uh, to test the water. Um, you can use test strips. They're not the most accurate thing, but they'll give you a ballpark figure. And that's about it with those. They're just kind of handy to have uh, when you're on the run. So, um, but I do definitely prefer a dropper kit. And uh, with these, uh, I like the Taylor K2005. It tests everything I need to test. Um, even if you have one to three parts uh, per million chlorine, you wanna check your cyanuric acid level also. So on this pool, we've actually tested the CYA and uh, they're in pretty good shape. They're at about 40 parts per million. So it's right in the middle of the range. Um, and that's the reason being is, is we do drain this pool down about a foot and a half, two feet every year to winterize it. So we're constantly putting fresh water in every year. And if you have any questions on where does all this cyanuric acid come from, well, your chlorine three inch tablets, uh, your dichlor shocks, 
All that has stabilizer in it, which is cyanuric acid, and some of it even has up to 46%. So uh, you're constantly adding uh, cyanuric acid to your pool. And what the cyanuric acid does, if you don't know, is it protects your chlorine from the UV rays so it doesn't dissipate out of the water so fast. This pool doesn't have uh, any free chlorine. It's got about two parts total. So at this point, we know we have to get some shock in this pool and uh, get the chlorine levels up to at least two to three parts per million. To bring this pool up to two parts per million, this pool's about 20,000 gallons. So we're gonna add about two pounds of shock per 10,000 gallons. So I'm gonna go ahead and put four pounds of shock into this pool and get the chlorine levels up to where they need to be. The next step is we wanna balance the pool. We wanna make sure everything's in order because high pH and high alkalinity also tend to create cloudy pools. The proper amount of alkalinity in your pool should be between 80 and 120 parts per million. You want your pH between 7.4 and 7.6. And like I said, we wanna make sure uh, our free chlorine levels are at least three parts per million when we have a cloudy pool like this because we don't know what's going on. We just wanna make sure there's enough chlorine to actually sanitize the pool. With our test kit, we, uh, we check the pH. As you can see, it's low, it's about 6.8. So we'll add a little bit of alkalinity increaser. We'll add a little bit of pH increaser and we'll kind of uh, check it here after we add that in about an hour just to make sure we're right around 7.5. Uh, we did add four pounds of Cal Hypo. As you can see by this pink side on this comparator, we are at three parts per million free chlorine. So we know we got enough chlorine in here to sanitize this pool. So with all that in check and uh, adding what we need to get the pH up, this pool should be balanced. Another factor that can cause cloudy water is your calcium levels. Um, high calcium levels uh, cause cloudy water, scaling, um, calcium dropout. So you might wanna check your calcium levels also. Those should be in the range of 200 parts to 400 parts per million. With calcium, it's just like cyanuric acid. The only way to reduce the calcium levels is to actually do a partial drain and refill on the actual pool and put some fresh water in there. The last thing I do wanna go over is contaminants in your pool. Obviously, that's the number one factor in this pool is we lost all of our free chlorine due to leaves, pollen, and other debris getting into this pool. So you wanna make sure that you regularly check, net out any leaves and debris, because once that gets in there, it is known to just kill your chlorine. And uh, once that chlorine's gone, you've got about 24 to 48 hours before this pool actually will cloud up. So uh, just beat the odds, keep your pool clean as you see the stuff get in, getting into the pool. Another thing I like to go over uh, when I do have cloudy pools or algae in the pool is phosphates. You might want to do a phosphate check. Um, they do sell test strips for it, or you can just go down to your local pool store and have them run a phosphate test. But uh, you want to make sure that the phosphate levels are low too. They also can create cloudy water. They're actually a good source of food for algae. So high phosphates are bad for pools. Now that we've checked our filtration on the pool, got the pool completely balanced out, there's really no reason why this pool is gonna get any cloudier. And yes, this pool would probably clear up over time with just the filter doing its job, but it's probably gonna take about 10 days without using any products in this actual pool. So we're gonna go over two methods that's gonna speed up the process and get you in your pool quicker. Here I've got my flocculant. This one's called Power Flock. Um, it's a BioGuard product, works great. And uh, before we add this to the skimmer, we're gonna do something with our sand filter to basically bypass the sand filter so it doesn't take all of our flocculant out. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna turn off our pump, and we're gonna come over to our multi-port valve. And as you can see, it's got a recirculate um, position. Some multi-ports will say whirlpool, but uh, what this does is it allows our water to come through our multi-port valve. It goes directly back to the pool bypassing the sand filter completely. And uh, we don't want the sand filter uh, filtering while we put our flo flocculin in because it'll just take it right out. So what we're gonna do, put it on recirculate, we'll add our flocculent to the skimmer and uh, we'll let it uh, circulate through the pool for a couple hours to get it mixed up. And then we can shut the system down and uh, let it settle to the bottom overnight. On these flocculants, you wanna read the instructions on the back. All these products do recommend a little bit different things and you wanna follow them so you get the best uh, results from the actual product. Um, on this one, 
It particularly says to uh, just pH to 7.5 to 8 for best results. I did raise the pH. I'm at about 7.6 right now. I like to keep it in the safe zone so it's easier for me to you know, balance it. If I was to raise it to 8, then I'd have to put in a pH reducer when we were done. So I just left her at 7.6 so I'm in the safe zone. And that's it. It's going to tell me to add uh, 8 fluid ounces per 10,000 gallons. Um, we're pretty cloudy, so it does say in the instructions that we can double it. So that's what I'm going to do is add 16 fluid ounces per 10,000 gallons, which uh, this pulls 20,000 gallons, so it's going to be this full quart. Before adding this to the skimmer or to the pool, uh, like I said, we've got our sand filter on recirculate, so we're bypassing the filter completely. If you do have a cartridge filter and uh, you have the drain port option on it and you can vacuum it out to the drain, uh, you'll want to remove your cartridge filter from the actual uh, filter housing before you add this product so it doesn't take it out of the actual water. With our product shaken well, we'll go ahead and pour it into the actual skimmer here. And that's it, it's going right through the pump, past the filter on recirculate, and back into the pool. So that's it, we'll let this circulate for at least two hours to get it mixed up into the pool. And there it'll uh, attach itself to all the particulate making this pool cloudy, make it heavy, and it'll actually sink to the bottom here in about 12 hours or overnight. So, um, fingers crossed. It works nine out of 10 times for me. So that's it, we should come here tomorrow. Water should be dang near crystal clear and uh, everything should be on the bottom for a nice slow vacuum to waste. And uh, this pool should be uh, cleared up. The other way to get this cloudy pool cleared up fast, uh, if you're not using the actual flocculent method because you don't wanna do all the manual vacuuming or you don't have the actual sand filter or cartridge filter with the uh, actual drain port, um, you'll want to try a pool clarifier. They make a couple different kinds. They have a synthetic one and a natural one. The natural one's made out of like seashells and Cretaceous type skeleton uh, animals in the sea. I don't know exactly what it is. It's called Chitizen. Uh, you can Google it. But uh, it's a great product. And then you have the synthetic one, which you'll want to follow the instructions to a T on it. You're only going to be adding it once about every three days. Uh, with the synthetic one, if you do decide to add too much, it could cause your pool to become cloudier. So it can have a reverse effect, and that's it. If you're one of those people that say more is better, then definitely go with the natural clarifier because it doesn't have a reverse effect if you add too much of it. There is one more option to even increase the speed of uh, clearing up this cloudy water, and that's a filter aid product. This one's called Sparkle Up. Um, it's a BioGuard product, and what it is basically is a cellulose, and what you're going to do is follow the instructions, um, add what you need to the diameter of your filter to a bucket of water, you'll mix it up, and then basically you'll add this product to the skimmer. What this does then is it makes a fine layer of the actual cellulose on the top of your sand or your cartridge filter, or basically decreases the micron on the filter and helps it take out the super small particulate that causes hazy and cloudy water. Great product. Just make sure if you do use a filter aid, you have to be around to watch that filter because it does increase the speed that your filter pressure is going to build. So you might be cleaning or backwashing your filter maybe even two to three times a day for the first day or two because it does speed up the process of getting this stuff out of the water. With all that said, um, you can either use the flock or the clarifier method. On this pool, um, I like to do things as fast as possible. So we did go ahead and flock this pool, as you've seen in the video. So I'll be back tomorrow, and uh, I'll exactly show you what this pool looks like in 24 hours, well, or less, probably about 18, and uh, actually show you how to manually vacuum it and get this pool crystal clear. And by the way, as you can see, we did put the hose in the pool. Uh, we want to make sure this water level is as high as possible because tomorrow when we come to manual vacuum this out to waste, it's going to be sending a lot of water out the backwash line. So we're going to lose probably two or three inches of water and we don't want our water level to get below the skimmer. So um, upon circulating your flock for a couple hours, make sure you maybe throw a hose in while that does that. And after two hours, we'll uh, kill the pump take the hose out and we'll let this water just sit undisturbed and everything should just settle to the bottom. 
We'll see you tomorrow. All right, we're back at the pool. It's been about 16 hours since we added our flock. Um, as you can see, we can see the uh, shallow end really good. Um, there is a little bit of haze still in the deep end, but uh, hey, I can make out the drain perfectly. Um, I can count the leaves stuck to it. So the flock definitely did its job. Uh, if we were to allow the flock to actually settle out for another six to eight hours, this pool would probably be crystal clear. I just don't have that time in my schedule to allow this to actually uh, completely settle out. So what we're gonna do for the customer is we're gonna vacuum this out nice and slow, get everything that's settled out right now out to waste on the actual filter. And then basically we'll go ahead and give it a couple shots of clarifier and uh, that should take care of the rest of the haze within 24 hours. When vacuuming to waste, we want everything set up before we start vacuuming. That way we can just get right to the vacuuming and we'll lose a lot less water. So on our actual pump, we're basically gonna wanna pull as much water and suction from the skimmer as possible. So in order to do that, if you have a valve or a way to shut off your main drain, I would do so. So that's it. By turning this valve, now our main drain's off and we got full suction from our skimmers. It's gonna make uh, vacuuming a little bit more faster and it's gonna keep a, a good suction on the vacuum. So that way when we're running our vacuum, we're not poofing up all that debris off the bottom. Another thing we're gonna do is make sure our backwash line's out and in an area where it can take a lot of water. So we'll probably be uh, taking somewhere along one to 2,000 gallons out of this pool. Um, it might be less, it might be more, it just depends on how long it takes. But the slower we go with the vacuum, the more likely we're gonna get most of it out instead of fluffing it up back up into the water. So on our multi-port valve, we're gonna go ahead and set this to waste. And that's it. Drains off, uh, multi-port valve set to waste, uh, our backwash line's out. So basically all we gotta do is turn this system on and it'll be ready to go. So as you can see, we got our backwash line going down in this ravine. Plenty of room for water. It'll just drain down in here so we won't have anybody's house flooding or not. So on this pool, I have two skimmers. Uh, they're hooked up to the same line. And that's it. We don't want to lose suction to this other skimmer. So I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, winterizing plug down in it. And that'll uh, shut this skimmer down so we have full pull off the skimmer that we're vacuuming with. As you can see, I've got the hose in the actual skimmer filling the pool already. So we'll let this hose run while we're vacuuming. It'll give us a little bit more time. And that's it. The reason I put this hose in the skimmer to fill the pool is if I throw it in the pool, it's going to stir up all that particulate that's settled out on the bottom of the pool and fluff it back up into the water. So you want to fill it from the skimmer so that way it'll just trickle out of that. That's it, we'll go ahead and take this basket out. And then down in the bottom of the skimmer, this plug will just thread in. Now this skimmer is sealed off. So we'll have full suction off of the other skimmer that we're gonna use the vacuum. And we'll go ahead and put our hose back in here. And just let that fill while we're vacuuming. All right, now we'll get our vacuum all set up. As you can see, I've got a uh, vacuum head on my extension pole, and that's it. We're gonna take the hose, and that's it. One of these will spin. That's the one that goes actually on the vacuum head. And then this other one will just go down into the skimmer itself. When we prime this hose, we wanna be as gentle with the water as possible. We don't wanna stir up any of that stuff that settled out because we it took 16 hours for this pool to get where it is now and that's it we can see the drain and it's just a very very minute haziness so we don't want to just like throw this vacuum down the bottom and poof up a bunch of stuff so what i'm going to do is we're going to put it down there real slow and that's it it's still going to stir up a little bit but uh the less, the better. So you can see that stuff down there. You can see it just poofing up those walls. It is so powdery. So with that in place, we're gonna go ahead and get the air out of our vacuum hose. 
And we'll just feed that down into the water. It's easier to feed this hose down and get the air out if the hose is actually out on the water itself, on the surface, rather than on the pool deck. Water? We'll go ahead and run that into the skimmer. We're gonna use the vacuum. All right, so she's ready to go. All we gotta do is fire that pump up and it'll be uh, vacuum into waste. So go ahead and fire the pump up and get started. And when vacuuming this, yes, you'll stir up a little bit. So there will be some haziness anyways when you're done. Unless it's just really, really heavy stuff on the bottom, which tends to be the case if you're like flocking algae and stuff like that. But uh, this stuff is so fine that uh, it's almost next to impossible not to get a little bit to poof up into the water. So that's it. There might be a second vacuum after this. Or in this case, I'm going to use a clarifier and probably just put their robotic vacuum in there to keep stirring up anything that settles on the bottom and get it up into the water for the filter to take out. If there is leaves and stuff and debris on the bottom still, you're going to want to clean your pump basket out. Because when this thing gets full, it's going to take away from your suction on your actual vacuuming. And that's what we don't want that because that's just going to make things fluff back up in the water as you can see like i was saying that drain was completely covered with leaves so we hit that drain and it just filled this pump basket so we'll go ahead and empty this out and uh make sure we have good suction on our actual vacuum head here we are we're on our last uh about four or five passes this pool did take me about 45 minutes it's a pretty good sized pool it's a 20 by 40 it goes down to almost nine feet deep. I think it's eight and a half. So definitely had uh, quite a bit to vacuum. And that's it. It looks like we lost about two and a half inches of water. The actual water level is actually right in the middle of the skimmer where it's supposed to be now. So worked out perfect. We won't have to drain any more water out. And uh, we already backwashed our filter, so we don't have to do that. So. Hey, we got lucky. We finished our manual vac to waste on this pool and it's looking pretty good. It does have a little bit of haze to it, but we can see the bottom uh, throughout the whole pool. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and give it a recommended dose of the actual clarifier and uh, the filter should have no problem clearing the rest of this up in about 24 to 48 hours. Thanks for joining us with our Cloudy Pool Fix video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for easy access to all our do-it-yourself pool care and repair videos. And as always, another happy pool with Pool Elementary.